Hey, it's Diana of Cauldron and Craft. In today's video, I'm going to walk you through sifting my warm composting bin and creating new bedding for them. There's a lot of benefits to worm composting. I personally didn't have success with traditional composting with a tumbler and the space that I have is really small. So worm composting has been so easy and basically the lazy way to compost, but you get the maximum benefits from it as well. Some of the benefits are adding nutrients to the soil. And this is particularly important for people with container gardens like me, where I'm basically creating soil, I'm buying bagged dirt and sometimes making my own soil, mixing different things together. But the worm compost really adds nutrients to it, especially adding it throughout the year like I'm doing now in the middle of the summer, kind of refreshing the plants. It increases the soil's ability to retain moisture, but it also increases drainage. So it creates that perfect balance of moisture for the plants and it adds beneficial bacteria to the soil. That's something that's lacking in a lot of commercial soils is the good bacteria that helps plants absorb the nutrients. Um, and the worm compost itself has nutrients that are available to the plants in a way that's easily absorbed. And I personally enjoy having all of these, I call them my little pets that my husband won't let me get a dog, but I have a thousand worms in a bin in my house. Um, and some of the biggest things that I hear when I tell people that I have a worm composting bin in my house is like, oh my gosh, does it smell bad? Um, things like that. And a good bin doesn't smell bad because it's aerated properly. Um, it only gets stinky if there are too many, like if there's actual rotting food in it um, that you, if you feed them too often. And the other thing is well, oh my gosh, do you have just worms crawling out all over the place and all around your house? And the answer is no, because a good healthy bin, the worms want to stay in it. And occasionally a worm will find its way out just by kind of probably tipping over the edge because the bin doesn't seal super tightly. But for the most part, they stay in because they don't want to leave because that's their happy home. And so I'm going to walk you through harvesting what is called black gold because it's so rich in nutrients and so good for the plants people refer to it as black gold and it, you also don't get a lot of it it takes sort of a long time to work up to an amount that you can actually use in your garden and then i'm also going to walk you through how i create a new happy home for the worms for the next several months let's get started so here is my worm bin that has been going for about three months and I've been continuously adding paper and stuff so there's going to be some things that are not broken down um, but we're going to work through the parts that are broken down and go ahead and sift it and top dress the plants. So this is the corner where I normally feed them so they are really active in that corner and everything kind of just pushes this way so I'm gonna start from this corner to start sifting and I'll be taking out any pieces that have been in a long time that I haven't broken down for example some of this paper that came out of the shredder um, wasn't good composting paper so and you live and you learn and we'll just pick those pieces out rather than putting them back in but like this whole corner is pretty much pure worm castings and ready to be added to the garden. So basically, we're just gonna shake in this little basket. And things like some of this, this is jute fiber. Um, pieces of rope from when I made my gardening trellis and this will break down so I'm gonna put it back in there so the things that I know for sure will break down I'm gonna go ahead and put it back but some of this other paper I won't and if you get any worms that happen to make it into your sifted bin you just pick them up and move them back to their home And I'm gonna work quickly because I don't, I'm trying to beat the sun. Um, and this basket I got from the dollar store to be my sifter, but 
ideally you probably use something small, a little bit smaller because it's letting some of the bigger pieces come through, which is not really that big of a deal, but. And paying attention to what's not broken down is a good way to see what they don't like to eat. Um, for example, the first time I ever sifted my worm bed, I noticed there was a lot of onion skins that is like the, that papery outside skin of the onion that I just thought, you know, no big deal. They'll eat this. Well, they don't like it. And there was a lot of it. And I can still see a little bit right here. So that's like a little onion skin. So it's a, it's a good way also to, to figure out what they like and what they don't like. closer you get to the food spot, the more you're gonna worms you're gonna find in your scoops. So just be mindful of how many might be in your sift basket. And then if you're throwing away any trash, like how many are in the trash. And because they don't like the light, if they come out of the sifting basket, they're gonna try to dive in as soon as possible as soon as they can so you got to be quick to grab them so all this paper well this it's cardboard um, that I'm sifting even though it hasn't broken down yet I'm gonna put it back in so it can keep breaking down but it's good to still sift it so that it aerates it because cardboard can get compacted with moisture and create an anaerobic environment it back up so they don't dry out while I use my fresh compost in the garden. I've been using these plant watering stakes with bottles of water with mixed results. I may do a video about that later on, but now I'm going to top dress all of the plants with the worm castings. And this time of the summer when things are producing fruit, is the perfect time to give them the little boost of nutrients they get from the worm castings. And I'm doing it on the top and down in the hole where the watering stake is just so they can, if it rains, they'll get the nutrients from the top and it can also kind of sift through the terracotta. sifted the bin we have to give the worm some fresh bedding so here I have some shredded up egg cartons that I save because um, this is actually compressed recycled paper so 
Uh, my local grocery store happens to use these, but you could use any cardboard um, as long as it doesn't have a coating on it. Um, also, I have brown paper bags that I've shredded up over time. Um, it takes the worms about three months to work through brand new bedding, so you have plenty of time to kind of accumulate some new bedding for them. This time I'm going to use some straw that I purchased for a different project and I happen to have like a whole bale of it so I need to work through it. Oh, my face is red. So my first worm bin I used almost 100% coconut coir and some shredded paper to set up the bin and I decided pretty quickly that I wasn't going to do that again because it's really expensive and the coconut coir could be better utilized somewhere else like to build container soil it's more cost effective for something like that so then the first time we sifted the bin and we had to reset it up again I used a little bit of coconut coir and mostly shredded paper and cardboard and that worked out pretty well and this time because I have so much I have a whole bale of hay or a whole bale of straw that I need to work through I decided to use that primarily with some of the shredded paper and the straw will help keep the paper from being compacted. Like we saw when I was sifting it, there were kind of whole globs of wet paper, which is fine. The worms will eventually work through it, but too much of that compacts and compresses and keeps the worms from being able to move around and it keeps oxygen flow from being able to help the worms along. And it becomes anaerobic and it becomes stinky. A good bin should not smell bad. So worm bins are pretty much labor free except for once every three months or so when you sift it and make new bedding but the benefits from the garden far outweigh the little bit of work and the, the slight monetary investment to start off with another good reason to use a mixture of materials for bedding is for different types of nutrients and it has to be browns when you so when you hear in composting things that are browns are high in carbon like paper cardboard straw um, things like that and providing a mixture of things not just for aeration but also for nutrients um, is a good practice so collecting lots of different types of browns to start off a new bed or a refresh bed um, is a good practice and you'll notice and sometimes I was using gloves just for cutting and things like that because the straw was really pokey but now because I'm about to put water in the bedding to make it wet enough for the worms like you don't want to put this stuff in there just dry because it they their bodies will dry out they need moisture um, for respiration now because I'm adding the water I want to be able to feel how wet it is and a mistake I made in my first bin was making it a little bit too wet to begin with and it took a while for the, the bin to kind of balance out and be the right moisture level and so last time I've aired more on the cautious side and made it slightly drier especially because in that corner that we left there was a lot of wet cardboard and I want to be able to balance that out and as you add food to it it also makes the bin wetter so start with a slightly drier and then you could always add water but it's a lot harder to soak up excess moisture if you have too much so that was about a quart of water so I'm going to give it a squeeze there's no, it feels damp, but there's not dripping water coming out. Yeah. So I think this is wet enough to start out with, and I'll just monitor it for a couple days to see, to make sure that it's not getting too dry. Because the paper is pretty much wet, but not soaking wet. Part of the bin intact 
with some of the food that's recently been fed is that it helps start off the new bin and get the good bacteria going. So I'm gonna mix this in to kind of help get it going. the worms should be all set for the next three months and I'll continue adding food so that I can harvest again. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.